What? No witty comebacks? No final threats? No last words of any kind? I'm disappointed, game. Hey, go go and Umaro, you're just in time for the load bearing finale. Yeah, we might want to get out of here. Are you gonna warp us on out of here, Terra? Oh. Wait, where'd that magicite come from? Don't answer that, viewers. Ah, so it was true. Wait, so if we can't use magic, how the hell are we gonna get out of here? <laughs> no, I'm just jacking with you guys. Come on, let's go. And thus, our story has come to an end. And what a story it's been. I'll be quiet for most of the ending here. As nice as that animation is, game, you're not fooling me. You're just turning the same page over and over again. Oh, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm not going to nitpick the technical limitations of the day. Wait, they had actors? Oh, not quite. This is the first Final Fantasy game, I believe, where they gave characters a last name. Yeah, once again, FF7 was not the first to do so. Just step on the switch, Cyan. What are you doing? There you go. See, that wasn't so hard. Like a boss. <laughs> Edgar's staring at him. He's Italian? I like how they have the medley going in the background. How it plays a bit of each of the characters' theme songs. Very nice. Why? What's wrong, Setzer? Whoa! Yeah, let's go out of the door. That's not bursting with flames. has a middle name, too? And Sabin does as well, Rene. Wait, they're French? Oh, man. Oh, I'm kidding, viewers. So I guess middle names were reserved for the royal family. trained hard for 10 years on a mountaintop, just waiting for the random call from your brother. Hey, fuck you too, Edgar. I saw that middle finger there. Yay, the Moogle theme. that thing, Mog. <laughs> Reminds me of that scene in Toy Story with the claw machine. Ooh. <laughs> Watch the hair. <laughs> I 
I think that's the only time we see Mog's angry face, now that I think about it. Whoa! Aw, oh, you scared the poor little Moogles. Yeah, kick ass. Go, Umaro. He's still one of the oddest choices for an optional character, in my opinion. Go, go, as. Generally. Oh, no. Go, go, is go, go. It's not Daryl, it's not Leo, it's not Guest Hall. Sorry guys. Ah, best man for the job. He even blinked when she did. <laughs> uh, you can stop mimicking her now, Gogo. Well, it looks like it's back to the void with you. I like how they chose some way to represent each character. Something that resembles their personality or their story in a way. Um, gaw. The airship's a... What? You're going the wrong way. I'll find shortcut to hell. Uh, maybe he wants sexy time with Celis. Wait, why does Locke have Celis's music? Ah, uh, that's why. Yeah, I guess uh, Locke does end up getting the girl after all. Just standing there. Go give him a hand. Ah, Tara, with her pendant that was never relevant in the entire game. You know, usually the mysterious girl has a pendant that in some way influences saving the world, or is critical in saving the world. But no, not this one. Ah, it's Maiduin. that work? Rome, arrow knee. Yeah, yeah, she took an arrow to the knee. I know, guys. <laughs> Yeah, I was able to make that joke in this LP after all. <laughs> I 
No way. Remember what happened with Ozer? That's a cute little scene, though. Shadow as Shadow. Yeah, even in the ending credits, they don't spoil his real name. Nice shuriken toss there. Shadow, where are you going? about him later and yeah shadow stays behind to well die <laughs> they never explicitly come out and say so but that's what he does magus that's why grand train looks like oh what is it called dark matter <laughs> wow i just went blank there for a second I do have a game request for Chrono Trigger right now, which is kind of cool. One of the guys I work with asked if I'd ever do that game, and I might. But yeah, I guess Shadow's way of making amends for his past is to kill himself. Which is unfortunate. I really like Shadow. But again, we'll learn more about that later. I have a couple bonus episodes planned for you guys. One of them being All of Shadow's Dreams. Wait a second. You can fly? Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I totally forgot about that one part in the game. Oh man. Yeah, I can't remember everything. It's been a good two or three months since I started this LP. it guys we saved the world what's left of it anyways There's no more espers no more magic no possible chance of this war occurring again in the future <laughs> uh, game. no actually it's over there is no sequel or oh what is it called Spin-off. There you go. Yeah, there's no spin-offs or sequels or anything like that. This game is coming to a close. Although, I would be totally for a full th HD remake of this game on the PS3 or even the Vita. Having the Ultros and Chupon Colosseum battles in Final Fantasy XIII 2 was a total slap in the face. But I'm pretty sure that this game will never see the light of day when it comes to a true remake. Not that half-assed piece of shit we got on the iPhone. But hey, hey it looks like Terra's alright. Now it's time to sit back and watch the credits roll. Man, what an epic game. So I'm going to use this time to give the game a, a short little review. It's a good way, in my opinion, to get any final thoughts of the game out there. And Well, this is my number one favorite RPG of all time, but that doesn't mean it's not without its flaws. No game is perfect. I do have a couple of gripes. However, they do not lie within the graphics of this game, which I easily give a 10 out of 10. This game is one of the most beautiful looking games on the SNES. 
The environments are very detailed, the backgrounds are well done, the character sprites are also very well done. They show a, a wide array of emotions and reactions and things like that. Spell effects are also very cool looking. They don't take forever in a day to get through either. Uh, just like the summons, the espers are all very cool looking. They each have a unique design to them. And again, you know, it doesn't take five minutes to use a summon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the enemy models are also very, very well done. You got enemies that look very menacing and threatening to goofy. And what the hell is that? So, again, I like that very well. Uh, this game is a little dark, but that's okay. It, it fits the theme of this game. Uh, this game is not very lighthearted by any means. You got people dying left and right, countless villages being set on fire. Uh, but uh, Celis even, they showed her getting beat by the soldiers. She tried to kill herself. I mean, this game is very hardcore, <laughs> especially for its day. So yeah, graphics, 10 out of 10, easy. As far as the music goes, uh, I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Uematsu did a phenomenal job on the music for this game, although it's not my favorite soundtrack, believe it or not. Although the boss music, the battle music, Terra's theme, Dancing Mad, uh, the ultimate boss music against Atma Weapon and the statues, uh, Shadow's theme, there are just so many great pieces of work here. And overall, they just, they come together so nicely. He did a very, very fantastic job. But it's not without its flaws, um, as I previously mentioned. So, 9 out of 10 for the music. As far as gameplay and mechanics go, yeah, I'm gonna take a few points away here. This game is not balanced by any means. Um, even if you don't use espers to level up your stats, it's not very difficult. Um, and you can always use Scan or Libra to find out the elemental weaknesses of a particular monster, so it's not like the game hides the information from you. And really, that's where all the strategy of this game lies, is in knowledge. Um, so I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. For the most part, the game does very well in battle. It's not too difficult, but it's not mind-numbingly easy either. Even if this is your first time playing, you'll get a good challenge out of the game. Um, the only thing I wish is that buffs and debuffs played a bigger role in the game. I mean, they did to an extent, but once we got things like Marvel Shoes, then buffs kind of went out the window. Um, they, they really had no use um, after that. And as far as debuffs go, well, this game doesn't really have debuffs um, per se. You can't really lower the enemy's stats other than their level. Um, but the debilitating spells like Berserk, Sleep, Silence, um, and the like, they weren't too useful in random battles, which I'm okay with. And against certain bosses, they were just really, really cheap, <laughs> as you guys have already seen, so I'm just going to leave that there. As far as the story and characters go, um, I'll give that a 9 out of 10 as well. The story is your pretty standard JRPG cliché. You know, you have your mysterious amnesiac girl with a pendant, an evil empire who wants to take over the world, and a ragtag group of heroes that has to stop the evil empire. So, you know, it doesn't do anything to try and break the mold, but what it does do, it does well. It's, it fits very well in this setting and in this world. Um, as far as the villains, well, yeah, we'll do villains first, then the heroes. Uh, the Empire is a very well-done villain, I must say. Um, I like how they were involved relatively early in the story, and we didn't have to wait 9 or 10 hours to find out what the hell we're doing, or who we're fighting against. Why it took them 15 years to start putting their plans into motion, I don't know. And as far as Kefka is concerned, he's a great villain. You know, he's always around, he's always doing something evil, um, he's always up our ass, and, you know, he's relevant to the story. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for the World of Ruin, which I don't know how they dropped the ball on that one. I guess they were more focused on making it open-ended and didn't want us to be bound by plot devices, which 
I guess I could see that. Um, but still, they should have had at least Kefka play some kind of part in the second half of the game, but... Oh well. Um, as far as the heroes go, I like most of the characters um, on our side. They, they each have their own unique job and special skill and background story that the game touches up on here and there. Uh, each character is relevant to the plot at one point or another, which again, I like. You, know, you don't have characters who are introduced and then you never see them again. Oh wait, Umaro. Yeah, Umaro was kind of a an oddball character for them to throw into the roster there. I think as, as an optional character goes, Gogo was good. You know, that's how you do a secret character. Uh, much like Vincent and Yuffie. I mean, they're sort of relevant to the plot, but not really. But they're still fun to play as. And Umaro, he's just... I don't know, it just doesn't... I don't like the, that idea. So, there's that. But, you know, every other character, uh, I think, uh, was very well done, so... Um, let's see. With all of that put together, I have to give this game as a whole a 9 out of 10. I know it's not perfect by any means. As I already said, but it holds a special place in my heart. You know, I have a lot of fond childhood memories um, attached to this game, and I'm glad I got to play through it again and share it with you guys. Um, I even got to see some new things that I never knew were possible, like Mog dying in the air while jumping. <laughs> I mean, if I never decided to LP this game, who knows? I might have never seen that happen. Um, so I want to thank you guys for. Um, watching this LP and joining me in this playthrough. If it was new to you, I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as I have. I had a lot of fun making this game and going through it once again. Uh, let me know what you guys thought of this game and this LP for that matter. You're always more than welcome to leave a comment in the comment section below or you can send me a private message either here or on Facebook. I provide the link to that in every video description, as well as on my YouTube channel homepage thing. So feel free to uh, drop a line, even if you just want to say, hey Kai, what's up? You know, that's cool too. Um, as always, I'm open to comments, questions, concerns, any kind of feedback whatsoever, whether it be about the game, the LP, um, technical things like audio, video quality, commentary, you know, just whatever. I love to hear from you guys. Um, I believe that wraps up this project, though. I've shown you guys everything I wanted to show you, with the exception of, well, the Dragon's Den and the Soul Shrine, because they weren't around in the original version of the game. So, I, <laughs> yeah, I can't show you those. Um, the other things I didn't show you were the Psycho Cyan Glitch. By the way, this is the Final Fantasy Crystal theme. It's a shame we don't get to hear it more often. Such a sweet piece of music. But I'm sure somebody has uploaded a video of the Psycho Cyan glitch, and basically all it does is allow Cyan to attack non-stop until every enemy is dead. In one turn, by the way. But it's a pain in the ass to get set up, and I just don't feel like showing that to you guys. <laughs> um, it's really not anything special, to be honest. And the other thing I didn't show you was what happens if you equip an offering on Gaw. But that should be pretty obvious, as he gets four rages per combat round, and that can get pretty, well, awesome, <laughs> to say the least. It's pretty cool, I won't lie. But yeah, that wraps up this LP. Um, I do have bonus episodes in mind for you guys, which I'll start to upload over the next couple of days. I want to show you guys all of Shadow's dreams, all of the limit breaks for each character, with the exception of Umaro and Gaw, because they don't have a fight command and subsequently they don't have a limit break. I also want to show you how to keep Sid alive on Solitary Island. And I'm still debating about doing a fourth bonus video showing all of these summons in the game. I'm on the fence about that, but I may end up doing it just because. So, uh, yeah, I don't really have too much else to talk about, so I just want to say uh, thank you for sticking this LP out, at least I hope you guys are still watching at this point. <laughs> but um, if you are, thank you, as always, for watching and giving me your time and your patience. And um, hope you guys have a good day. Take care. And I will see you in my next Let's Play project, which should be starting 
this coming weekend. So, uh, this is Kaiten's 29 signing off. Peace.